Hey guys, this is David Osario, head coach and owner of CrossFit South Brooklyn. We're here with this Inside the Affiliate series to talk about the what, why, and how we do things at our gym that have allowed us to be as successful as we have over the last 10 years. Our goal for you guys is to take this information, steal it, make it your own, and make it better. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about free intro classes at CrossFit Affiliates. These are essentially sample classes that people who are on the fence about joining can take to get a taste of your gym to see if it's right for them. All right, so let's talk about what's being assessed when somebody comes into your gym for this sample class. The facilities, the coaching, and the programming. The facilities need to be clean and organized. You wanna make a really good first impression with these potential members, so make sure that your gym is organized and everything is spotless. If someone goes down for a burpee, they come back up and their shirt's a different color, that's gonna leave a lasting impression. So cleanliness is really important. Coaching, this is also super important. You wanna make sure the coach teaching the class is engaged, they're professional, and they have a plan for everybody coming to that gym. People come into CrossFit and they're a little bit apprehensive. Is this right for me? Am I fit enough? If you have a coach who's really empathetic, is gonna take care of those people, that's gonna leave a lasting impression. It's gonna give them the confidence they need to sign up long-term with your gym. And finally, the programming. So here we're ambassadors for CrossFit. We wanna make sure that people are getting a good sample of CrossFit, but we're not crushing them. So I don't wanna impress people with intensity. I wanna impress people with how well I'm coaching, how clear the movements are, how I scale for different uh, variations of people that might come into your gym. So the program needs to be sensible, scalable, and appropriate for someone who's never done CrossFit before. All right, so let's take a step back and talk about why we offer this class in the first place. So it's pretty intuitive that you want people coming into your gym, checking out your program, but there are some barriers to entry that are specific to CrossFit affiliates that you might want to consider. One is the cost. A lot of individuals are used to the typical gym rate, the 25 to 100 bucks per month. CrossFit gyms, we're gonna go anywhere from 150 to 300 plus per month. So people might have some sticker shock and they might need a little extra convincing that what you're offering is worth that cost, right? People will pay a premium for support, for programming, for engagement. That's really what they're there for. And if we can pull that across in the intro class, they're gonna see that this is worth that cost, worth that price tag. So the second element is foundations. People are used to being able to put down money and start the next day. They're excited about their fitness program, they wanna get rolling. If your foundations class doesn't start for a couple days or even a week, you wanna make sure that person realizes this is worth their time, it's worth the wait if they wait a couple days. We'll talk about some incentives later on to get them signed up for that. And finally, stigma. Maybe they think CrossFit's too hard for them, maybe they read an article that kind of intimidated them. This is your opportunity to be an ambassador for the program and show that they're gonna have a great time here, that they're gonna be safe, they're gonna be supported, and that it's right for them regardless of what their background is. So it's our opportunity, again, to show how professional we are and how much they're gonna be taken care of. Finally is the personal connection. So that person has taken the time to come to your gym, to meet you, to see your facilities, and they're doing that for a reason. They're on the fence, but they're not convinced yet. So this is the opportunity for you to converse with that person, to answer their questions, to take care of them, to talk about whatever orthopedic limitations they might have, to give them that last little boost of confidence that they need to join your gym, join your program, and start training with you guys. All right, so let's talk about how we do things at our gym. First, the on-site greeting. When people walk into this gym for the intro class, you need to have somebody there waiting for them, maybe get them signed up on a waiver if they haven't done that already, tell them where to put their bags down, if they need to get changed, where they can get changed. What you don't want is someone's first impression into your gym, walking around confused, not sure who to talk to, where to go. There's a bunch of sweaty people in the corner with their shirts off, throwing around big weights. You wanna make sure that someone's there to meet and greet them so they know exactly what to do, where to go, and when class is gonna start. All right, so once class starts, you can bring people in. And we always wanna start with a little bit of pre-context. So CrossFit's a brand new experience for a lot of people. Maybe they've never been in a gym like this, never done a workout of this style. So before we get rolling into the workout, we wanna make sure that we talk about what's gonna happen, right? So I come in, I talk about, hey, my name's David, I introduce myself, I welcome them. I say we're gonna do a little bit of movement prep, we're gonna get into a warm up, then we'll get into a workout of the day. Afterwards, we'll talk about how the gym works, do a little cool down, and see if they have any other questions. That really shows that you have a plan. Like I said, this is a brand new experience for them. It might be a little bit disorienting if you just roll right into things and start moving. Is this the workout? Is the workout coming later? What's going on? Who's this guy? You know, you wanna make sure that people are really crystal clear about what's happening for them in the next hour. So finally, we like to talk about what our expectations from them are. We tell people that we want them to listen to their bodies, ask questions, and most importantly, have fun. This whole conversation only takes a couple minutes and it really helps set the stage for a successful class. So let people know what's gonna happen before you start that class. 
So let's talk about the programming. So we'll get people into a circle and start our basic movement prep, shoulder circles, leg swings, ground-based mobility, that kind of thing. While we're doing that, we also like to do our question of the day. So we'll go around and I'll ask people what their name is and why they're there. This is great because it gives you context for each person in that class, what gave them a reason to get up out of bed and come to your class today. Maybe you have an endurance athlete who's doing this to supplement their training. Maybe you have somebody whose best friend is a member of your gym and they got coerced into coming that day. Maybe you have someone who's just kind of been curious about CrossFit, they saw it on TV and they want to check it out. This allows you to have a more directed conversation with those individuals throughout that class and gives you better perspective to learn why they're there, what their motivations are, and how you can best give them the experience that they're looking for in that class. So once everyone's loose and limber, they've gotten to know each other a little bit, we're gonna go on to our formal warm up. So we'll do about three rounds or somewhere about eight minutes of a triplet. What we've been doing lately is a 100 foot dog sled push, 16 sit ups, and eight ring rows. We like using the dog sled because it's kind of a novel movement. It looks fun, it looks cool, it's a fun thing to do your first time doing CrossFit. We keep the weight light and we have them just walk it through that range of motion, 50 foot out, 50 foot back. So if that doesn't make sense for you and your gym, you could just as easily do 16 air squats. So the sit-ups, again, pretty straightforward, simple movement. They're gonna move through a nice full range of motion. They're gonna get experience to warm up on the ab mat. And then finally, the ring rows. We get a horizontal pull. Again, all of these movements are scalable for anybody. Anybody can walk into your gym and do these movements. They don't have to think too much about them, and you go about eight minutes of that, they're gonna be nice and warm. Then we'll take a little break, and then move on to the conditioning. All right, so after a quick little water break, we'll regroup and talk about our conditioning piece. So we always do an AMRAP in our intro classes. This does a couple of things. One, it allows us to really control the time frame for each of these segments. And two, it's gonna give people enough time to get an appropriate dosage of CrossFit. If you do something that's too short, people might not have the intensity to be able to push and get a proper stimulus out of it. If you do something that's too long, you have people who are really deconditioned, they're gonna feel like this is way too hard, it's taking forever, and they're kind of burning out. So really like that 15 minute time domain for our AMRAPs. Whenever we do our AMRAPs, we always program a triplet, and it's always gonna be a monostructural movement, a weightlifting movement, and then a gymnastics movement. What this does, it gives them a good sampling of CrossFit's three different modalities. So if all I do is bodyweight movements, if I'm doing sit-ups, air squats, and burpees, it's gonna feel like a boot camp class. There's nothing that's gonna distinguish that from that boot camp class down the street. So make sure you give them a proper sampling of what CrossFit's all about. So in terms of the monostructural, we'll either do a row, a run, or an air bike. Again, these are all pretty lowish skill movements that you can get people rolling on pretty quickly. For the weightlifting movement, we don't use barbells. We always do dumbbell work here uh, for a couple reasons. One, loading of a barbell, weight on, weight off, trying to figure that out per person can be really time consuming and tedious. Number two, I might have a hard time, so someone's doing a front rack, whether it's a thruster or a push press or a front squat, if they don't have that shoulder mobility, they're gonna be uncomfortable the whole class, and that's gonna bias what their experience is. If they're uncomfortable, they feel like, oh, this is painful, they're not gonna be thinking about pushing through that workout. Same thing if we're doing a deadlift, someone gonna have a hard time arching their back. Again, I don't want to focus so much on a skill that they're having trouble with. I wanna give them something that everyone can be successful with. So we do dumbbell thrusters. You can have five pound dumbbell thrusters, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it is for that person. But again, everyone can be successful with a dumbbell thruster or a dumbbell push press right off the bat. And finally, our burpee box jumps. Maybe you don't do the box jump portion, maybe you do, but there's nothing more quintessentially cross than a burpee. Gives them a good sampling of a body weight movement. We like to use about 12 to 16 inch box jumps if we do that using the soft boxes so no one is clipping their leg and jumping, uh, falling off that box. So again, make sure the workout is balanced, make sure that it's got elements of each of the modalities so they get a true sampling of what CrossFit's all about. So looking back at this workout, it's relatively straightforward. The movements are medium to low skill. Everyone can have a nice successful workout there. You don't want people to feel overwhelmed. If you're doing things like Olympic lifts, if you're trying to get some crazy hero workout in there, people are gonna leave being like, this is too much for me, okay? Remember that everything that you're doing is brand new to them, from the air squat to the sit up. So you don't wanna overwhelm people by trying to impress them with your Olympic lifting knowledge. That's not the opportunity for it. Wait for foundations, wait for the group class to introduce those higher skill movements. Here, give them the good sampling of what CrossFit's all about, make them successful, make them have fun with it. All right, so once the workout's done, what we like to do is have everybody give each other a high five. Everyone in class gets a high five, coach gets a high five, you can put your equipment away. Afterwards, we'll circle up for just for a minute or so to do kind of in the same little vein of the movement prep. We'll do a little cool down, just some shoulder circles, again, some ground-based mobility. We can have a little conversation like, hey, what was the hardest part of that workout? What was your favorite part of the workout? Get people kind of flat taste on what they experienced just a second ago. 
And then just like we had pre-contacts before the workout, we're gonna have some pokes contests. What you don't want is give people a hard workout and have them kind of walk out the door, not sure what their next steps are. So we talk about results-based fitness. We'll often have a volunteer talk about, okay, how many rounds did you get? How much weight did you use on the thrusters? How high was that burpee box jump? And what this does is shows an example that, hey, you have a quantifiable result from this workout. So say Bill got three rounds of this workout. What you can say is that if Bill trains up a little bit, gets a little bit better at these movements, increases his capacity, he retests and gets three rounds plus 300 meters and 10 thrusters, he can say objectively he got fitter. So this is really that difference between training and exercise. And this is a really good opportunity to edu educate people about the difference between those two. This really is a big deal. People have like these light bulbs that turn on when they realize, hey, I've been working out, but I'm not really quantifying it. And here we had specific ranges of motion. I got a score for my workout and I can quantifiably see my progress over time. That's a really big selling point from my perspective. So make sure you talk about that. Next, we do a really down and dirty CrossFit 101. In essence, I say we do things like monostructural cardio type movements. We do weightlifting. We want to be able to pick up something heavy, do it effectively, efficiently, and safely. We want to have basic body weight movements, be able to kick up to a handstand. And ultimately, CrossFit's essentially physical education for, adult, for adults. It's a class that you wish you had when you were growing up. And then finally, what's next? So they've done the free intro class. You talk about how foundations works, maybe some of the classes that you offer beyond CrossFit if you have any, and then some sort of incentive to sign up. I'm not a big hard sell guy, but what you want to do is give people an opportunity to sign up right then and there. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe foundation starts in a week, week and a half, but if you give them say, hey, if you sign up today, you get a 15% discount on your foundations, that's just incentive for that person to kind of sign up for the class, get themselves rolling as sooner than later. What you don't want people to do is go home, think about it for two weeks, and then give an opportunity to check out other programs, to get lazy again, to not want to do it, to think maybe it was too hard for them, et cetera. So provide some incentive for them to sign up, whatever that might be. And then finally, at the end, provide an opportunity for them to ask questions. They've just had an experience of CrossFit, so they're a little bit more educated on what happens at your gym, but they're gonna have questions like, how big are classes? How much does this cost? Am I fit enough to join? What other programs do you offer? Things like that. So this is an opportunity for you to have that final conversation to again, keep it open-ended, make sure that no one leaves with any ambiguity. We often say too, like, hey, if you wanna ask me a question you don't wanna ask in front of the group, I'll hang back a little bit. Otherwise, you can go to our front desk and get information about signing up. This is a nice little wrap up to the end of your class. All right guys, so that's how we do it. We talked about what's being assessed in free intro classes, why someone might wanna offer one of these classes, and finally, how we do it at our gym. So one other note is that there's gonna be people who come to these classes that don't sign up, and that's okay, that's part of the process. But you wanna make sure that you're putting your best foot forward, being a tremendous ambassador for CrossFit, so that person who doesn't sign up, maybe for cost reasons or travel reasons, they can still tell two, three, five of their friends they had a great time at CrossFit, it was a lot of fun, and maybe that encourages them to come check out your gym. All right guys, so sit down with your crew, see what you wanna steal, see what you wanna hack, have a great time with it, and give the best possible intro class you can.